This is ADT 1160U, Digital Communication Technologies. The title of this particular video clip is The Shannon and Weaver Model. Communication is quite complex. We saw in the previous video clip that when communication passes through technology, it gets more complicated. There are several competing explanations to this. Some of the causes of misunderstandings arising from communication have been coined several decades ago. The analysis questions for this particular video clip are as follows. Who were Shannon and Weaver? What purpose does the Shannon-Weaver model of communication serve? What are the eight variables that interplay? In 1948, an American mathematician named Claude Shannon wrote an article he published in the Bell Electrical Journal. The article, titled A Mathematical Theory of Communication, proposed an explanation of communication. Later on, Shannon partnered with an electronic engineer named Warren Weaver to better apply his theory to communication. The two put their skills together to create what became known as the Shannon-Weaver Theory of Communication. At that time, communication was understood in its simplest mode. There was a transmitter whose role was to send a message and a receiver whose role was to decode the message. Shannon and Weaver's objective was to explain that concept a little bit more in depth. Shannon and Weaver presented the following model to explain the steps of communication. According to their model, there are eight variables that play on communication. There is the source, the encoder, the message, the channel, the decoder, the receiver, noise, and feedback. In order to understand this model thoroughly, we need to define each key element. This model begins with the source of a communication. This is where the origin of the communication stands. The source can be an individual or a group that has a reason to communicate something. In other words, the communication process begins when an individual or a group want to give a message to another individual or a group. The encoder's role comes in after the source of communication has been decided. The encoder will transform a concept that the source wants to send into a format that will reach the audience who needs to interpret it. The message is the information that is being communicated from the transmitter to the receiver. Whether or not this message has a substance does not really matter. What matters is that a message is transmitted. The channel is a means to transmit the message from the transmitter to the receiver. For a message to be transmitted, it is essential that a proper means of transmission be selected. It is a route that the message takes to reach the receiver. This route can be verbal, written, electronic, audio, video, etc. As the message travels in a channel, noise comes into play. This noise is an interference or a distortion that can modify the message being sent by the transmitter or the sender in such a way that it is misconstrued. Noise can be physical, semantic, pragmatic or rhetoric. Before the message reaches the receiver, it has to be decoded in a form that the receiver understands. This is the other side of the sequence, as when the transmitter encodes the concept he or she wants to transmit. The receiver is the recipient of the message that was sent out by the transmitter or the sender. Feedback is when the receiver tells the transmitter that he or she received the message and interpreted it accurately. Shannon and Weaver put the emphasis on this section of the model because it is the only way for the transmitter or the sender to know if the communication process was effective. This is where the model becomes cyclical. Up until the 1990s, this model helped explain why it was so difficult to take distance education courses. For about one century, there were two models of distance education. One consisted of sending a package to the student who would read text and answer questions and then send back the modules back for marking. 
The auto model consisted of a teacher who would transmit a course through radio waves in which he or she was giving explanations about work to do to students, such as the School of the Air and Remote Learning in Australia. At this point, you can go to the course outline and find the link to their website, where they talk about the history and how they evolved with the technological advancement. In both cases, there was only minimal interaction as if the students had questions, they either had to write to the teacher or call the teacher if such service was available. When the internet came, everything changed. The synthesis questions for this video clip are as follows. Do you think that Shannon and Weaver's model applies to digital communication technologies? Are there components of the model that apply more than others? Can you identify other problems other than noise or feedback arising from digital communication technologies and interactions?